Welcome to Afterthoughts. Thank you for joining us. My name is D.T. Baker, and I'm a musicologist with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra, and I'm joined uh, for Afterthoughts by the leader of the ensemble of the music you've just heard, Robert Uchida, concertmaster of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra, and principal cello, Raphael Hookman. Thank you both for joining me. Um, now, Robert, I know that you spoke about the challenges of this, of the nature of this particular performance. So let's let's talk about things from a more musical aspect and start off with a softball for you. Why the why summer from the four seasons aside from the calendar? Uh, well, you know it's funny you call it a softball, but I <laughs> <laughs> because I was told that's what we were going to play. <laughs> the questions get harder from here. So. Right, 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 right. Um, well, I think with Vivaldi's Four Seasons, I mean, of course, it's one of the great masterworks of, of our repertoire of Western classical music. And uh, Summer is incredibly compelling work. It tells a story. Um, there's so much imagination in the way that it was written. Uh, and I guess it's, it's popular for a reason, so we were excited to program it. Um, now, this is a work that you have had the opportunity to present uh, to audiences before with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. And as, as someone who's had the chance to, to kind of dive into it more than once, I'm curious about, with a work this well known, whether your own artistic impression of it changes or evolves each time you get a chance to sort of do it again. It absolutely uh, absolutely changes. Uh, the first time I got to play this um, in its entirety was in 2008. So it's been, yeah, about 12 years since the first time I performed it. And um, yeah, every performance, every ensemble, every, yeah, every group of people, every hall, it all has a, uh, an impact on, on how uh, you interpret it. And, um, and things grow, you know, you start to think, oh, uh, you know, this is supposed to sound like a goldfinch. Maybe I should, you know, explore how quietly I can play. And certainly, also when you're recording, you don't have that added dimension of uh, thinking about projection. So you know, the mic is a meter away from you. So um, you can play with one hair and as wispy and quiet a sound as you like, and it's really effective. Um, and sometimes. Well, actually, in this concert hall, you can play super quietly, and the sound still projects. It's one of the great things of this hall is that how silent it is. Uh, not every hall is is like that. So there, sometimes, uh, you know, if you're playing in a different kind of concert hall, um, you have to adapt to that. Even things like just the amount of noise that air makes, you know, like the the air conditioning system, it has an impact on what your range of dynamics is. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I find so challenging about recording is that it's this pinpoint in time, but it's there forever. And that's, that's what's so stressful about recording because um, I'm sure tomorrow I'll feel differently about something in summer and I can't go back and change it. Now it's done. So. Um, Raph, this is a work I'm sure that you've played, you know, more than seven times. Uh, tell me about, tell me about what it was like. For one thing, you're performing without an audience, mm -hmm. you know, in, in this pristine environment that Robert was just talking about. How, how different is your approach? I think we had to um, play for each other, play to each other, you know, I think that was kind of... Uh, we, we, if there's no audience, then, then we are the audience, audience for ourselves. For our, that's in the moment, in the moment. Obviously, we think about who's going to watch it in, in the sense of a video or a recording, but um, I think we tried to play to each other and play for each other uh, in that sense. And uh, I, 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 I'm not sure I've played it seven times, to be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, because you, you, uh, I, I think I played it uh, years ago. I used to be a member of this small orchestra called Symphonia Toronto in uh, in, Tor uh, in Toronto, and uh, <laughs> I think I play I might have played it there for the first time. But it's 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 more that is a piece that uh, we all know as a, as a young musician, a young string player. There's a point in time where you discover the Four Seasons for yourself, and you have your favorite sort of recording. And I think when when Robert and I were were kids. 
uh, the great violinist Nigel Kennedy came out with this groundbreaking uh, album which uh, sold more, al more uh, copies than any other classical music album of all time ever sort of thing. And uh, so there was that, and, but, but there was another recording that had a huge influence on me. Um, uh, it was an Italian uh, chamber orchestra, a Baroque orchestra called Il Giardano Armanico. Do you know that one? Okay. It's a, it's yeah, a famous, the, the, yeah. The, the Astray, it was Astray recording, isn't it? Or, or? I can't remember the label, but it, it, the, the, the album cover was uh, incredible. It was, a, it was a photographic still of a bullet shattering a violin. Oh, that's right. And it had yeah. the bullet and goes through it. And, and they, at, at that time, it was, it was amazing because they just had this like incredibly energetic and uh, varied um, performance with so many dynamics, and it was you know with with baroque uh, uh, you know gut strings and broken. It, it was almost a careening performance. It was so. It was, it was amazing. I must have listened to it about a thousand times <laughs> or something when I was a kid, and it was one of those you know sort of albums that that gets you really really excited about classical music as a kid and gets you. Um, uh, 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 committed, committed to uh, to having a career in music. So you know, I, I definitely have that that sort of uh, thing in my ear, and trying to to, to make a, a play on that. And and uh, there's there's so much that one can do with it because uh, not everybody knows this, but in the score there are these lines of poetry written, which are meant to uh, give you imagery for exactly what the, the music represents. It's really, it's really programmed music, and so it tells a, tells a story from that perspective. This is a question I'd, I'd like to hear both of you respond to, because, uh, you know, this is a, a in, in terms of Baroque orchestra, yes, it's an orchestra, but it's also a very small group, really. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that small of a group, I would imagine that the, the artistic opinions of each member of the group does have some weight when you're getting ready for this performance. So I'm wondering about that and, and the nature of this particular performance. Right. I, um, so you're absolutely right. Uh, what was also really nice about, about this experience is we had a lot of rehearsal time. Like I've performed the whole four seasons many times with the amount of rehearsal time that we had for summer. <laughs> so it was really nice because we got to you know, dig into it, talk about it, talk about articulations and pacing. And, uh, and also, of course, we hadn't played together for three months. So there was that added dimension of having to you know, feel working with one another again. And, and uh, when I think back to the rehearsals, for sure, everyone spoke at some point. It was great. And yeah, everybody had something to, to contribute. Um, I feel like often we do this with just a slightly bigger uh, ensemble, also because of the size of our hall. Um, but for this, actually we started planning this when we were still in phase one in Alberta. So it was a maximum of 15 people. So we were thinking, okay, we need to keep it, keep it really small. Um, and it worked really well. Uh, everyone, of course, also being a part, but everyone had a different perspective and ideas about how we could make it better, thoughts about what was together and what wasn't. We, you know, there was, uh, it, was, it was great. It was a really fun uh, environment to work within. Oh, you want me to comment yeah, on that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Uh, I felt like uh, you know, it was it was really nice to have the time and the space for. We played something through, and then we'd sort of play a spot, and then somebody would say, "Why don't we try it this way? You know, why don't we put put it this part of the bow or something like that?" And uh, uh, you know, Robert was the leader of the rehearsal, but it was it, you know, we definitely had a, a, a you know, we didn't vote on anything, but we like we offer offer suggestions and try it out and be like, that, that feels good, that feels better. It feels so great. And then, of course, the, the sum is greater than the parts. I mean, that's like the ideal when you're playing music with other people. Is, mm -hmm. and, and there were so many suggestions also that people gave me in terms of pacing or whatever that um, I felt made, made things better. And uh, so that's also like one of the gifts of being professional musician is we get to work with people who inspire us and who we can learn from. It was really, yeah, it was really fun. 
Let's finish off with hopefully what is truly a softball question. Yeah. Um, because you mentioned the fact that, that you guys hadn't played together since March. And I know, uh, you know, once again, this, was the, this is a small sampling of the musicians of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. But it was something. It was something that you haven't had since March. How did that feel? Yeah. It, really it felt good. incredible. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, it's, been, it's been very tough. I mean, we try to, you know, the musicians in the orchestra have been trying to do things to, to reach our community, reach our audience in different ways. There have been pop-up concerts and all kinds of, uh, well, we've, we've made recordings uh, of solo instruments in the hall or, uh, you know, uh, two instruments in the hall. Um, so we've been doing things to try and reach our audience, and um, but you know there really isn't anything like playing in an orchestra, and um, there's no replacement for it. So to get to get back to to work and and dig into something, it was uh, it was really great. I hope we do it again like really soon. <laughs> yeah, it was really uh, emotional to come to the hall and and see. I mean, we were being pretty careful, uh, wearing masks backstage and, and such uh, things like that and, uh, and, and, and being really, uh, uh, you know, careful with, with our sort of distance and socializing and everything. But at the same time, it, 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 was, it was very emotional to, uh, to come and sit and, and sit and play on this stage, which is our home, our, our office, our home away from home. Uh, and it's, uh, it was really wonderful to, uh, to experience that again, and uh, you know, it it makes me um, makes me long for the time when we when we have a, a full audience in this hall again one day, yeah. and uh, that'll be that'll be something. Um, I, I I don't know how everyone's going to feel, but I know I know I'm going to feel incredibly emotional when that happens one day soon soon I hope, uh, because it's it's now it's something we'll never take for granted ever again uh, that we'll be able to do. Well, in the meantime, we had this tonight. Thank you so much. It was, it was fabulous just to hear that multi-textured sound once again that we've all, we've all been terribly missing. Uh, thank you for the performance. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and thank you for everything you've been able to do uh, for our audience. Thank you. Thank you, Dave.